Episode 16 of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, Kim's son Jamal reads Usman like a book and confronts him about his lying problem. Jamal's not your average 27 year old kid. Because of his mother's lack of emotional intelligence, he had to mature at a very young age. And we can really see that by how when Jamal was only two years old, his mama was prioritizing developing a relationship with a convicted murderer over staying home with him. And it comes as no surprise why he would say things to the audience like, I've seen a lot of men come and go in my mother's life. I empathize with this kid. I can only imagine how difficult that would be to grow up with the delusional mother on this magnitude and the lack of a strong father figure, but good news is Usman's ready to step up to be that dad for you. Jamal's superpower is his calm, but he made a couple mistakes during his conversation with Usman that we're going to learn from in this video, so make sure you stay until the end. I am going to see Usman in Nigeria. Actively losing brain cells. About two episodes ago, Usman asked Kim if she was willing to raise his nephew in America for him. We gotta backtrack. Kim originally promised Usman that she would be willing to allow him to take a second wife. We've seen this girl take multiple trips to Nigeria, even though Usman has a past of cheating on her multiple times. While in Nigeria, Kim didn't leave her hotel room unless it was to go meet up with Usman's family because she was really trying to get his mother's blessing so that she could become Usman's first wife. However, because Kimberly's 51 years old, she's an older woman with dried up ovaries like the Sahara Desert. His mother did not approve of her. Usman and his family are really riding this culture wave of it's very important for us that I have a child and because Kim cannot give me a child, I need to take a second wife. Usman's very similar to Mohammed. They abuse the culture card in order to get what they want out of the relationship. After days and days of Kim begging his family to allow her to become the first wife, the family finally agrees to allow her to become the first wife as long as she agrees to their demands. Kimberly agreed via signature on a contract to allow Usman to take a second wife for baby making purposes. And in addition, Kim promised to allow Usman to visit his family throughout the year at least four times. So every three months, he would be allowed to go back to Nigeria. It was funny to watch Kim act like she won the Mega Millions jackpot when his family finally allowed her to become the first wife, even though he's done nothing but treat her like trash this entire relationship. Kim was in high spirits, so she called an immigration attorney to tell the attorney the good news. However, she found out that polygamy is actually illegal in the United States, which means that she can't uphold her end of the bargain. Kim was absolutely devastated about the news. So she returned to the United States with a lot of uncertainties, but Usman assured her that they would figure out a solution together as a couple. More sad news for Kim, after only a couple weeks of returning to the United States, her mother unfortunately passed away, RIP. She lost her mother and that's a very traumatic thing to go through. But I also think that she's constantly trying trying to like make it sound like her mother was on board for her relationship with Usman and her mother obviously wasn't. She would have preferred for Kim to not be in an online relationship with a scammer on the other side of the world and be with someone more around her age that's in America. Like it's very obvious, right? And she was happy about me and Usman. She loved Usman, you know, and she was happy about that. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. I get that Kim and her mother were close, but to like openly lie and try to make it sound like your mother was on board for your relationship with Usman is very uncalled for. You could just mourn your mother and say some great things about your mother and memories with her, but don't try to make it sound like she was on board for your relationship with Usman when she wasn't. Anyway, some time passed and then Usman had a brain blast moment that he couldn't wait to tell Kim about. So do you remember Muhammad's son? Yes. I'm feeling like... It's not going to be an easy thing for what me. What do you mean? I don't know what you're saying, though. I don't understand. So, I feel like maybe I'm going to adopt. Say what you want about Usman, but he's a very sly guy. He's very aware that Kim will do anything to be accepted by his family. So his new plan is to adopt his brother's kid as his own in order to get him to America as well. And make no mistake, Usman's purpose in doing this is to secure a foothold in America for his entire family. So you would adopt the little boy. Yeah. Um, Basically, all, all his children are my children. You know that, right? Take a mental photo of this. This dude's talking out of his ass. Him adopting his nephew is in no way legitimate. Usman's brother Muhammad is still alive, one. And even if he weren't, there's not one parent in Nigeria that would accept him adopting his nephew as him having his own child. Family raise each other's kids all the time. But at the end of the day, if he's really going to ride this culture card, he needs to see it through. And in their culture, you need your own biological kid. If today anything happened to him, he died, I have to make sure that his children are okay to take care of them. It's how it is in Nigeria. You, but you gotta this give me a is more of my blood. And then so he can be like my own son. 
The Smith's just saying this to Kim in order to get his nephew better schooling opportunities abroad in America. I've read online that the schools stay on strike in Nigeria because a lot of the teachers want a pay increase, which is fair. Like I can only imagine taking care of multiple kids. Like that sounds exhausting. Once Usman finally secures that green card, him and his nephew are gonna bounce back to Nigeria. He's gonna marry a local girl from his region and start pumping out four kids. Usman says to the audience, if getting the second wife is not something that could happen, I think adopting my nephew Mahadi would be the best idea because it's important in my culture and tradition to have child. Usman goes on to try and convince the audience that him and his nephew have this deep, profound connection. When we first see 51 year old Kim on Happily Ever After episode 15, she's packing her bags because she's once again planning another trip to go see Usman in Nigeria. The main reason for my trip is to find out more about this adoption thing. I mean, I need to see him in person. We need to talk about this stuff. He's going to Nigeria as well to meet Sussman for the first time, so expect some loaded conversations. Jamal and Sussman are around the same age, which is mad awkward, and his overall attitude about the situation is like that scene from Step Brothers. I'm not gonna call him dad. This is a really slippery slope for Jamal because this guy's already been caught cheating on his mother multiple times. In fact, the last time that he talked to this guy, it was on the tell-all when it was exposed that Usman talked to his ex Zara behind his mother's back. So already as a son, you're probably thinking, fuck this dude, right? Like, I don't want my mom to be with this guy, but I guess he makes my mom happy even though he hasn't done anything to take accountability or fix those past behaviors that he's still doing to my mom. Even though Kim is 51 years old and her son Jamal is 27 years old, she keeps asking her son for relationship advice and when he gives her fire advice, she doesn't listen to that advice, which is incredibly frustrating. And guess what the cherry on top is, y'all? He's not only gaining Sussman as a stepdad, but he might be gaining a step bro. So you're gonna see the child on this trip? Yeah, we're gonna see him. I have to meet the kid too? I would like you to. I really don't know. That's so weird to me when I think about it. I'm so excited. Wait till Sussman hits Jamal with a call me dad or settle down, Junior. <laughs> Kim tells the audience that she can never raise a child that her own son Jamal was against, which is highly doubtful considering how she's bent over backwards for Usman in this relationship. If Usman decided one day to get in his Mercedes and run the scroll over, she would say sorry. This girl's literally that far gone. And since the inception of this relationship, there was a huge power imbalance because she started off pursuing him as an obsessed fan of him and the show. While Stan's packing her bag for Nigeria, her son Jamal comes in the room and asks if she's excited for the big trip and she lights up like a kid on Christmas. How are you feeling about going back? I'm nervous. I'm excited to see Usman, though. So excited. Yeah, How are you feeling? I'm so excited to see Usman. Kim asking Jamal if he's excited to see Usman in Nigeria is so jokes. Obviously, this is the worst case scenario for any son. Imagine if this is your mom doing the most to get her back blown out by a scammer in Nigeria on national TV. The only good thing about this situation is that Jamal gets a free trip to Nigeria. I think my mom is really going to try to force me to like Usman or something. Um, I just hope he's himself and he doesn't try to do too much because I'll see right through that get that Jamal's just trying to support his mom, but hopefully he doesn't have to third wheel the whole time because watching Usman and his mom make out will be hella awkward. Kim goes on to try and convince the audience that she's only adopting Usman's nephew out of the goodness of her heart and because it's the right thing to do morally. Well, only one itty bitty little problem time and time again that is proven to not be true. It's actually funny to watch her constantly defend Usman because a couple episodes back, he literally told her that he was sacrificing more in this relationship than her by just being with her because he has better options than her. Last time Usman and Kim had a huge argument, she ended up crying Crying, he called her ugly and then the next day she just dropped it never brought it up again It's like she's got the same memory as Dory that fish from Finding Nemo Kim and Usman have been off and on for the past three years She got him a ps5 a MacBook Pro and helped him on the set of his music video She paid for the hotel rooms all the meals and the only thing that he had to do was dick her down It took him the entire first season to finally have sex with her and then once he actually did the dirty deed He could do no wrong in her mind fast forward Jamal and Kim arrived to Nigeria Kim and Usman run into each other's arms and start kissing and Jamal looks like he wants to off himself in the corner. This is very cringe. <laughs> I love you, hey. Jamal even admits that when his mother was kissing Usman, he wanted to throw up in his mouth. Later, there's more bad news because it turns out that they booked his hotel room right next to their room. It's too long. Our room's right there. It's, Wait, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm not going to be at the door. Like, <laughs> nah, okay. He's about to hear in the middle of the night, Oh, Usman, aka Soldier Boy, give me that yammy. I'm the first class. Good old baby, you're Lisa because I'm the new first class. You can tell right away that Usman's threatened by Jamal because he's bigger, stronger, faster, and better looking than him. If you watch any of my past videos on Usman, and Kim, you see that he's wildly insecure and has a huge ego, which is why he targets old ladies because he wants to feel like a big stud, especially in the bedroom. Side note, we got a good thing going here. I make the videos, y'all watch the videos. Can you guys please watch my video I just made on Brendan Fraser? I know it has nothing to do with 90 Day Fiance, 
but I worked really hard on it. I feel like it's the best video on my channel and I never asked you guys for anything except for to donate and buy my merch occasionally. Also, I finally made playlists on the channel. So if y'all are looking for specific videos, they will be easier to find. Sorry, it took forever to do that. About midway through episode 15, Jamal walks into him and Usman's room because they're all gonna eat room service together as a family. Nothing like spending quality time with dad. I wanna believe in future and I hope that this is, I mean, the Nigeria is going to be a second home. My Just second home? It, yeah. Just the way it is second home to Kimbali. I mean, we'll see how this trip goes, you know what I'm saying? Wow, what a sus thing to say, Sussman. This is Jamal's first trip out of the United States. Don't make it loaded. He's not gonna be as easy to manipulate as his mother is. I feel like you didn't like me. I feel like you don't like me. Well, to be fair, he doesn't even know you, Usman, because you're a very surface level dude that's only with his mom to get on this TV show. And I feel like this was just such an unwarranted thing to say. Obviously, it's gonna take time for Nigeria to feel like a second home to Jamal, if it ever progresses to that point, right? Because he doesn't need to have Nigeria feel like a second home to him. Usman's obviously reaching here, but let's see what Jamal claps back with. I'm her son, you know, like I'm seeing her get screwed over by so many men. The only thing that bothers me a lot is like, you know, like I've been with her for like a year plus. Jamal's like, wait a damn minute, gotta sit up for this. If I'm not a good person, that is not how she can hide it for you for a year. Jamal's obviously taking the high road here. I would like more follow-up on what makes Usman think that he's a good person. I just typed in what makes a good person on Google and 10 characteristics came up and those characteristics are warm, friendly, clean, honest, loyal, trustworthy, dependable, open-minded. The only characteristics that Usman embodies from that list are warm and friendly. He almost got clean as well, but then I remember that he got a pedicure from a rando on the street. So I'm going to get you a gift. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to give him a gift. A whole PS5, bro. <laughs> bro. <laughs> what? <laughs> it comes full circle, you guys. Kim got Usman a PS5. He used that PS5 and then re-gifted it to give to Jamal, her son. <laughs> Funniest part about this, hands down bar none, is that before Usman re-gifted this PS5 to Jamal, he said to the audience that he's only giving this gift to Jamal to prove that he's not a bad guy and he's in fact a good guy, which is jokes. I don't know if you know this or whatever, but I'm super famous and I'm a really good person. Here's a PS5 that your mom got me that I'm re-gifting to you to prove that I'm a good person. Just like when your mom got my mom a cow. Little tip for Sussman, all the gifts in the world wouldn't mean as much to Jamal as you treating his mother with respect. Sussman goes on to say about Jamal, I would love for me and him to be friends because because he has a lot of power in my relationship with Kimberly and I'm not trying to have him control me or control his mom while I'm with her. I just wanna say real quick for everyone that finds themselves in a relationship like this where you're with a dude that's trying to cause a wedge between you and your child, you need to side with your child as a mother and leave that dude. Dudes come and go. At the end of the day though, that's your baby. That's with you for life, right? And Kim's too busy in this delusional land riding this roller coaster of a relationship to realize what Usman's really doing here. Jamal, I want you to know that She's, she's safe. I would never break her heart. <laughs> You've already broke her heart multiple times, bro, what? By the time that Kim realizes that she's on a joyride, her relationship with her son could very well be ruined. But hey, let's look on the bright side. At least he can smoke and play Elden Ring when mom and dad are fighting now. And while we're on the topic, Cheapo didn't even give him a game with the PS5. I just took a second look at the PS5 footage and the packaging looks way off. So hopefully that is in fact a PS5 in the box. For all we know, this could be the Giga Toaster 5000. What's in the fucking box? All I'm saying is it's worth looking into. This seems like the kind of dude that would order a toaster off Alibaba and say it's a PS5 in the box. Jamal takes his PS5 back to his hotel room and I'm assuming he played games all night while his mom made animal noises. The next day the fam bam goes to a park to play archery games with Usman's friends. While in the car ride on the way to the park, Kim briefly describes her milkshake incident to Jamal. Remember that iconic scene when she once again threw a milkshake or some kind of drink in Usman's face? You know about make jam, but you make cake, right? Mm -hmm. Where'd you meet them at, bro? Um, remember I told you I threw, I threw a milkshake at Usman, but I apologize. It's a great first impression. I'm sorry. You think you overreacted? Yes, I overreacted. Right now as a son, Jamal's asking himself, what did Usman do to my mom to get her to react that way? But Kim's not gonna tell Jamal that because she's shielding Usman from her son. Was Kim's reaction of throwing the drink in Usman's face ridiculous? Absolutely. And it's unbecoming of a woman her age. She should hold herself to a higher standard. However, what's fair is fair. Usman said a lot of things to trigger her before she lost her shit, but that part's gonna be omitted from the story because this woman is hellbent on painting him in the best light for her son. And this is why mothers like Kim annoy me because they wanna use their kids as an 
emotional crutch, but they always prioritize whatever shitty dude they're in a relationship with over their child. I feel like my mom thinks that I'm here, you know, to get friendly with these men and be friends. And like, she really wants me to just see what she sees. But obviously I'm coming from a complete different perspective of someone who's mainly worried about her best interests. So valid, Jamal's gotta be the first kid with a brain on the show. Anyway, they start playing the archery game. Jamal whiffs the first shot because his stance is absolute dog water. Matt Usman goes and appears to drain his shot, but we don't actually see it caught on footage, so it's fake news. Ken says to the audience, it's really cool to watch Jamal hang out with Usman's friends. They love Jamal, <laughs> they love him. You're trying way too hard, lady. They've only known your kid for about 20 minutes. Fast forward, Jamal's team ends up winning the archery game, and then they sit on a park bench to talk, and Jamal asks his friends what they think about Usman and his mother's relationship. She's a very good person, actually. But, you know, Usman is a man without kids. Funny enough, after engaging in a bit of small talk, Usman admits to Kim and Jamal that he hasn't told his brother Muhammad about his plan to steal his kid and raise him in America with Kim. You know, I didn't even talk to my family about this. You know my that, right? Wife? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. Wow, he's such a misleading dude. In the last episode, he made it very clear to Kimberly, or at least led her to believe that his mom and his brother already agreed to this plan to raise this kid in America with her. What a scammer. The only reason that Kim and Jamal are there in Nigeria is to talk face to face with Muhammad and his wife about this adoption process for this kid that she's supposed to raise with Usman in America. Jamal's like, wait a minute, you invited your brother and his wife here and they have no idea about your plan to take their child. And when Jamal asks this, Usman nonchalantly responds, yes. In fact, my brother and his wife are just under the impression that they're meeting you for the first time, Jamal, and also Kimberly. This is a lesson not just for Stan, but for everybody. If your dude's a plotter and he's comfortable lying and omitting information from his family, he's gonna be very comfortable doing that same shit to you. Many levels beyond a red flag, Jamal goes on to say to the audience, my mom trusted Usman for his word, but I'll start trusting this dude when his actions match his words. Let's talk about what's really upsetting. The fact that your mother got a stranger that treated her as a fan, a PS5, before she got you one like i'm genuinely curious why you wouldn't have one first before she's giving it to this fucking stranger i thought but you I, told them but i told them that they should come with my but i thought because, you already oh my god man. i thought you already told them that listen why do you always do this to me I'm happy she asked this question, even though it's a dumb question. It's obviously to put her in uncomfortable situations to get her to react in order to make their segment more entertaining, obviously. Usman could literally spread Kim's mouth and hawk a loogie in her mouth. And she'd be like, oh, that's Soulja Boy loogie. This girl is gonna go through it. And she's been going through it this entire relationship with this dude. And as long as he can keep getting away with shit and she's never gonna hold him accountable, why wouldn't he stop? Because all this is really resulting in is making their segment more entertaining. And there's not gonna be any consequences for treating her like shit because she doesn't stand up for herself. Dude even said in an interview that his relationship with Kim is a business transaction. It can't get clearer than that. You think he would give a fuck about this girl if she wasn't useful to him? Once I go back to the hotel room, Usman puts his feet up on the bed and says, hey Kim, my feet look dry, can you help me with this. Stan the fan does something unexpected. She actually tosses the lotion bottle to Usman and asks him to do it himself. When this happened, Usman responds with, you're mad at me or something? Dude really thinks that he can do no wrong. Why do you think that she's mad at you, Usman? Because you're a confirmed liar. If I had to take a wild guess off the top of my head, Kim's probably mad at you for withholding valuable information to once again place her in a loaded situation, which would cause her to throw an emotional tantrum and once again look foolish in front of the entire world. So Usman walks over to the pool to start up a conversation with Kim's son, Jamal, and I guess vent to him about his mother. <laughs> because of the situation, Jamal now understands what we've all been saying about Usman for the longest time, and that's that this dude's a liar. She was like shell-shocked that you didn't tell Muhammad what was going on. And I know that you aren't technically lying, but from where I'm from, when you don't tell the whole truth, it's kind of a lie, you know? No, Jamal, you were doing so good. Why are you giving an out to someone that abuses the culture card? This is the last thing that you should say to Usman. You really need to stay away from phrases like, in my country, we don't do that, or we don't do this. This guy is gonna take what you just said and turn it around to, oh, I didn't know that because in my culture, that's not what we do. And because you're a little bit ignorant towards the culture in Nigeria, he might get away with that. I don't lie in a relationship, actually. I don't lie, I don't easily lie, actually. Like You don't see it as a lie. Yeah. Yeah, but over there, you guys see that's like Yes. It's important to remember that Usman's words and actions have nothing to do with his culture and everything to do with the fact that he's a scummy guy that's not loyal and doesn't keep his promises. And for Usman to have the nerve to say that he doesn't lie in relationships usually, we can pull up so many clips of him lying to Kim just from this season alone. Don't you think it might be a good idea to 
make sure y'all can even live together first before bringing a child into y'all's lives? I think about future, how we can live together. <laughs> Usman's such a dumbass, no wonder he targets these old delusional women because as soon as he has to have a conversation or a debate with a person that actually has a brain, he has no valid talking points. That's going to be sweet for both of us. The only person that would be put in a favorable position if they added a child to the mix would be Usman because he would make him watch his nephew while he makes more shitty music in his room. If you look at it, in every marriage or relationship, you know, the couple would love to have, you know, children. There are so many couples that are happier without having children. What are you saying right now? You can tell that this man has never watched a child before or at least changed a diaper. What an ignorant thing to say from someone that's prioritizing clout over finding your soulmate. Once you actually find your soulmate one day, Usman, you're gonna realize that you don't need to add a child to the mix for that fulfillment. You're gonna feel fulfilled just spending every day with that person. Sometimes I feel like you don't really realize how much my mom does for you. You know, like, I'm not saying you don't appreciate it, but right now it kind of seems like you think you do a lot more than her. Well, really, I think it's kind of like even. Nah, even is generous, Jamal. Your mom has done way more for this dude in this relationship than he's done for her. Right now, Jamal's being very diplomatic with Usman and I like his calm nature, but I would prefer for him to be more confrontational and press him a little more. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Jamal goes on to explain that he's just looking out for his mom because someone has to be there for her. One itty bitty little problem, Usman feels like his control over Kimberly is threatened by Jamal's presence. So he says to Jamal, there's no need for you to be involved in our relationship, believe me. Oh, cameraman pants to Jamal's face and he's having a huge internal struggle because it's obvious that this dude is playing his mom. Jamal recognizes what we recognize. This scaven rap bastard is trying to isolate his mom and it's only gonna get worse when he eventually comes to America. After we meet Muhammad, Kimberly will be okay with the adoption and no matter what Jamal say, Kimberly just have to accept it if we are going to be together forever. Usman has zero intentions of spending the rest of his life with Kim and you can tell by how conditional his love is. And it's so crazy because Usman's bad intentions are way more obvious than Muhammad's were for Eve, yet Kim, much like Eve, is choosing to to ignore the red flags and she's even dragged her child into this much like Eve. Next day the happy family Kim, Usman, Jamal drive to meet up with Muhammad and his family and scout out this kid that they're about to adopt. The funniest part is that Usman confirms what I said earlier the big selling point for bringing this kid to America is the school system. <laughs> So this kid Mahadi is four years old and Usman was doing the most to try and convince us that he had this profound connection with the kid. How do you not have a connection with a four-year-old? Like that is so easy. Come here. You know me, you know me. I got you a present. This would be a great deal for Usman. You already skipped the hardest age to raise a child when they're a newborn. Also during the car ride they took, I noticed that Kim brings up her race a lot. Kim will often say things like, they're gonna think this crazy white lady's coming over here to take that kid to America. It wouldn't matter if you were any other race. They would still think that it was mad weird. After engaging in brief small talk, Usman informs his brother that unfortunately polygamy is illegal in the United States. So since he can't take a second wife, would it be cool if he borrowed your kid for a couple years? I was thinking if you can give us Mahadi to adopt him as our child. Me. Mm. Yeah? They really thought that this was a smart thing to come at them with whack ass rumple still skin energy. Can I have your kid? Like, what the fuck? This conversation does not go well. In fact, upon hearing this news, Muhammad Usman's brother is shocked. Y'all throw the entire conversation away because it became hella awkward. <laughs> Muhammad then informs the fan bam that he wants to raise his child in their culture in Nigeria as a Muslim man, and Kim says that she's not willing to to become Muslim. Would you want my mom to convert to Muslim? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Absolutely not. This loaded conversation basically ends with Usman stating that they will discuss matters at a later time, even though everyone seems emotionally checked out. Muhammad's wife was horrified the entire time, which is totally understandable. Like this woman obviously loves her children. She's not gonna give her child away to a stranger. As we've learned from watching Kim and Usman on the show Nine Day Fiance Happily Ever After, history repeats itself because later in the episode, Jamal gives his mother fire advice. And once again, she does not listen. She shields Usman and chooses to live and stay in her delusion about this relationship. With all the issues that you and Usman already have. But they're better now. Out, yeah, but they're better now. But there's still issues and they are still there. So it's like, why do you think having a kid is gonna, is that gonna make everything better, you think? 
I don't know. This entire episode was a great look for Jamal and a terrible look for his mother. And I'm genuinely concerned about this kid because it seems like Usman's gonna end up getting his way and he's going to push Jamal out of his mother's life. I hope Jamal watches this video and then immediately drags his mom to therapy because it's not his job to parent his mom. It's annoying to watch a mother not prioritize her kid and just do the most for a dude that really doesn't give a fuck about her, right? Super thankful for y'all watching my videos. Comment below, subscribe, love your friend, love your friend. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.